Spring and summer 2024 fashion is all about frills and bows, girly stuff. I'm all in. I found this free summer dress pattern, which checks all the boxes. It's the Milana dress by Vicky Saws, and I decided to make it. Hi, welcome to my eclectic channel. My name is Agnes and I make videos for fun. It's time to start working on the ruffle cap sleeves. So I took my sleeves to my ironing board and I folded in one edge by about one centimeter. Uh, and this is the, this is uh, the free, the one that's gonna hang over the shoulder. Uh, this here is the shoulder seam. Um, I did notch the center because this would get aligned um, with the sleeve hole. So I, I'm going to hem these two uh, using the standard method uh, to do like those uh, thin rolled hems. I'm, I'm making a tutorial below. It's very standard. <laughs> this uh, p pattern to cut those ruffles from the uh, the square square neck top uh, that I'm linking below the video uh, that pattern comes without instructions or well you would have to buy the uh, the issue of the sew magazine and that was some time ago anyway I don't have it I don't have instructions so uh, I went to YouTube for tutorials and all of the tutorials I've found work for one type. So first of all, they, they do their own pattern design. They're going off of the rectangles. You'll see that in the tutorial. So mine, I already, I did take a pattern for them, which maybe was unnecessary. Um, but in order to finish the ends of those, the only way I know how to do is from what I've watched in the tutorials. And that involves um, stitching them. They need to, to rejoin the shoulder seam uh, right there. So that leaves me with all of this as seam allowance, which is not what I want. Long story short, I'm going to modify these and I'm going to cut a curve so that it ends right where I have the seam. So I'm going to remove all of that here. This is too long. So next we're going to be doing some gathering, you guys, my favorite. Um, so I'm going to be working two rows of base stitches along the raw edge of those ruffles. So I don't think it needs to be exact, but uh, following the tutorial, I'm measuring five centimeters from uh, the side seam. So this is my, my armhole. And I'm going to place a pin there. And mirror that on the other side. And then you want to take your ruffle uh, and I, I've marked with a notch again where the middle is and the middle needs to line up 
with the uh, the shoulder seam. And then the ends will match up where I put the pin. And then the name of the game is to gather, gather, gather until the length matches uh, that of the armhole. And then call me old fashioned. But once I've gathered this, um, before I stitch with the machine, I like to go in and baste this by hand. I mean, you could pin it, but ruffles just move around so much that this is the only good way. I discovered that recently and I really wish I had found that out sooner. So many just sloppy uh, ruffle jobs in my past. If I were doing this right, uh, I would have uh, some uh, band of fabric, same as, in the same as my dress, cut on the bias. Uh, about three centimeter wide and long enough to go over the entire ar armhole. Uh, but I, I do not, like I, I think I've mentioned that I'm really, I was really short on fabric. Um, so I have nothing left. So I just have to scrunch up some scrap fabric. <laughs> it kind of matches. It's flannel. It's uh, not cut quite on the bias, um, but it's a little stretchy. And uh, in the end, it all gets sewn like underneath. So, it, you know, as long as it's light, light in color, I think it'll work. And what we want to do, uh, well, you we should actually follow the tutorial because it's much more clear <laughs> on that video. But I'm going to saw this band all around the armhole with all of my raw edges. I fold it in half, by the way, and I, all of my raw edges uh, together and just feed that through my machine. The, the hand-based stitching will really help and I am going to uh, pin this in place first before I uh, run this through my machine. To do this you really do want bias tape or at minimum something that's a little stretchy. Uh, it doesn't have to be elastic but it, it, it's got to have a little bit of stretch and as you're applying, it's good to pull on it a little bit. Uh, what that does is, uh, for, in this case, I don't think it matters that much, but generally when you do binding, it, it avoids your, sometimes you, you saw an armhole and it, it ends up gaping. The seam, the seam allowance, uh, the seam gapes. Uh, and, and that's because you did not stretch your binding. Judging from the tutorial, she's stitching this with uh, a little less than a centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Basting makes all the difference. And also, as you just saw from uh, the, the painful stitching footage, I used a ridiculous number of pins to hold the bias tape in place. And we'll work on that next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. <laughs>